My name is Ed Hussain and I'm the author of a new book called The House of Islam, A Global History. The House of Islam is on fire. I speak from experience. I speak as someone who was once part of extremist organizations, Hezb al-Tahrir, the Muslim Brotherhood and others. This is not academic theory. This is lived experience and observation across the Muslim world for the past two decades. Those who have set the house of fire on Islam include the government of Iran, the extreme Muslim Brotherhood elements from Egypt to Morocco to Jordan to Hamas, the uh, Hezbollah and its various tentacles, and the, 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 the Salafi Jihadi movement, ISIS, Boko Haram, Al-Qaeda and others who have taken up arms basically to impose the extreme Sharia that the Islamists and others want to see uh, across the world. What went wrong? The Marxist theorist Gramsci made an important point. The disorganized majority is controlled by an organized minority. Inside the House of Islam today, the extremists, the radicals, the Islamists, the jihadists, whatever name you want to give them, they are in control of our discourse, of our conversation with the rest of the world. Those of us who are observant Muslims know from our own backgrounds, from our mosques, from our daily encounters of an Islam that is peaceful, that's loving, that produced the Taj Mahal, that creates beautiful calligraphy and art. And that Islam is the Islam of the mainstream Sufi orders. In the last 60 to 70 years, we've seen the birth of Muslim Brotherhood, Hamas and other organizations to try to subvert Islam from within. The responsibility on Muslims first and foremost is to expel these extremists from inside our home. For as long as they continue to operate in our midst, we give them cover. Literally as Hamas uses innocent civilians as a shield against attacks from Israel, the extremists use the mosques, our university campuses, our publishing houses to advocate their form of statist, centralized, confrontational, politicized form of Islam that does not chime with our history, our reality, and worst of all, our future. They are harming us, our children, and the way in which Islam will be practiced for generations from now. What they want to create is a global government run from the Middle East. Just look at what ISIS wanted. I'm not being an alarmist when I say that their form of Islam is not an Islam that resonates with the vast majority of Muslims. Their form of Islam is wrong, flawed, evil, ugly, because they've reduced Islam to being a robotic form of halal, haram, right, wrong, do, don't, heaven, hell, black, white. Extremists don't understand the very basics of Islam. They've completely missed the point and misread scripture. Among them, you hardly ever find an erudite Muslim scholar. It was no surprise then, one of the Prophet's greatest companions and friends, Ibn Abbas, when he went to see the first group of extremists, the Khawarij in Islam, he saw among them not a single companion of the Prophet. Don't forget that those who claim to want to establish the caliphate were the ones who killed the prophet's own grandson. And what we're seeing now is an inability among ourselves to say to the Khawarij that they don't belong inside the house of Islam. Just as the early Muslims, Imam Ali and others, expelled them from within Islam, today we should expel them again too. The Islamist form of Islam that we see in Iran, that's confrontational, that's ugly, that's repressive, that's controlling, that's fascist, is the form of Islam that larger and larger numbers of Muslims are embracing on university campuses, studying engineering and medicine, and approaching the Quran as a textbook, as a civil engineering manual, rather than a book of divine guidance with color, beauty, context, nuance, poetry. All of that beauty that the great Muslim scholars, whether it be Ibn Arabi or Farabi or Ibn Rushd or Ibn Sina or Rumi or Hafiz or uh, Sidi Ahmed Zarruq, the list is long. That heritage is being subverted, is being burnt from within our, our house. It's incumbent upon us to set our house in order, but it's also necessary for our neighbors, our Jewish friends, Christian friends and others to come together to help us bring buckets, as Shah Abdullah bin Bayya says, to put out the fire that's burning inside the House of Islam. Otherwise, this fire will continue to burn and spread around the world. Those threats require Jews, Muslims, Christians, and others who have a belief in tradition, in family, in divinity, in the afterlife, in accountability, to work together as Abrahamic monotheists to bring back the beauty of God and divinity into our lives and rescue our faiths and our communities from the ugliness 
that surrounds us. Ahmed Hussein, author of The House of Islam, and you're watching JTV. To stay up to date with JTV content, click subscribe here if you're on YouTube and hit the alarm bell. And if you're on Facebook, hit the like button and under following, click see first. If you enjoy watching JTV content and want to help us continue to grow, please consider making a donation to us by clicking here.